All right, welcome to Applying Rational Number Operations Lesson 3.6. And we're going to be discovering this uh, essential question, how to use different forms of rational numbers and strategically choose tools to solve problems. So uh, even when you understand how to solve a problem, you might make a careless solving error. I'm sure we've all been there. You should always check your answer to make sure that it's reasonable. We're going to be doing that in a few cases here. In example one, we have uh, John is hanging a picture. He wants to center it horizontally on the wall. So that's side to side. And the picture is 32 and a half inches long. Okay, there's the 32 and a half right there. And the wall is 130, 120 and three fourths inches long. How far from each edge of the wall should he place the picture? So he wants to put it in the middle. And how far from each edge should it be? Okay, so we're first going to use the total length, 120. And we're going to subtract uh, the distance of that picture right there. So that means that 88 and 1 fourth inches is the, is the uh, total distance of both of these right here. Now what we do is we divide that by 2 to find out the measure of each. And what they did is uh, they multiplied by a half. Now multiplying by a half is the same thing as dividing by 2. 1 half times that is 44 and an eighth. In fact, half of 88 is 44 and half of a fourth is an eighth. So John should pay, place the picture 44 and 1 inches from each edge. So from here to here should be 44 and 1 eighth inches and here should be the same. Check for reasonableness. So this is where they're talking about, okay, you have your answer. Is your answer reasonable? Okay, well, instead of using 120, they decided to round it to an easy number, 100. Uh, in, instead of 120 and 3 fourths, they made it 120. And instead of 32 and a half, they called it 30 inches, just to give us a ballpark picture that we can easily calculate. So 120 minus 30 is 90. And 90 divided by 2 is 45. So when we're doing this, and, and I actually use it, I usually do this first before I get into my answer. But here we have 45 inches about for each side, and our answer was 44 and 1 eighth, which is close to 45. So yes, the answer is reasonable. Okay, so at the bottom we have this your turn question. A 30 minute TV program consists of three commercials. Each of them are two and a half min in minutes long and four equal length entertainment segments. How long is each entertainment segment? Well, I made this here, it's 30 minutes. So I made this number line uh, and this represents the entire 30 minutes. And these little breaks right here are the commercial breaks, two and a half minutes long each. So I decided to first take 30 and subtract this and this and this. And that's what I did up here, 30 minus each of the commercial breaks. And I found that while well, two and a half and two and a half, well, that's five minutes altogether plus another two and a half that's seven and a half minutes altogether that you have in commercial breaks so 30 minus seven and a half that ends up being 22 and one half and what i did is i did 30 minus seven which is 23 taking away another half and that brings me below 23 to 22 and a half then i changed 22 and a half to 22.5 and just threw it into a calculator because there are uh, what four equal length entertainment segments and you can see them here one two three four so how long is each segment it is 5.625 minutes and in my calculator here i have uh 22.5 divided by four and that is 5.625 okay oh and i should say minutes Okay, next, on to page 36, uh, I'm sorry, 96, and we have uh, this one, using rational numbers. Now, those rational numbers are any number that can be a fraction. You have solved problems using integers, those positive and negative uh, numbers. Now, we're going to be uh, using positive and negative fractions and decimals. A single problem may involve rational numbers of two or more of those forms. So we're going to be using fractions and uh, whole numbers and decimals, all in the same problem. Alana uses one and one-fourths cup of flour. 
for each batch of blueberry muffins. Hey, there, there's some blueberry muffins there. And there she has one and one fourth cups all purpose flour in her recipe. She has a five pound bag of flour. And that five pound bag costs $4.49. So five pounds, $4.49. And contains 76, which is 76, one fourth cup servings. So she can get 76 servings out of that five pound bag. How many batches can Alana make if she uses all the flour? And then how much does the flour of one batch cost? Okay, so we're gonna use our information here. Each back, each batch uses one fourth cups of flour. Okay, yeah, and 76, 76, one fourth cup servings cost $4.49. So we're gonna use logical reasoning. Find the number of cups of flour that Lana has, okay? And then use that information to find the number of batches she can make. And use that information to find the cost for each batch. So first, the number of cups that she has. Well, there's 76 one fourth cup servings. So 76 times one fourth. That's the same thing as 76 divided by four. And 76 divided by four is 19. So how many cups of flour? She has 19 cups. Now, using that, she uses um, uh, how much flour per batch? She uses one and one fourth cups per batch. Right here, it says right here, each batch uses one and one fourth cup flour. And one and one fourth is 1.25 because one fourth, is, we call it a quarter, and a quarter is 25 cents. So 19 cups divided, and this is how many, this is how many cups per batch divided by one. You can just do 19 divided by 1.25. And when you do it in the calculator, you have 15.2. So that means, well, and along here, Alana, she can't make 0.2 batches. So we're just going to say that she can make 15 batches in uh, with that five pound bag. Okay. Now we have the cost per flour. And when I see this cost of flour for each batch, I, in my brain, I'm thinking of this. I'm thinking of cost per uh, uh, batch. Okay, so that tells me I'm dividing uh, the four dollars forty nine cents divided by the fifteen. Four dollars forty nine cents divided by fifteen. So that's thirty cents. And does this make sense? Well, eighty bags contain uh, a bag contains about eighty quarter cups. See, this was seventy six, and seventy six is close to eighty. And uh, or and if you divide that by four, that's twenty cups. Each bag uses one cup of flour, so there's enough flour for about twenty batches. A bag costs five bucks, so the flour of each uh, so the flour of each batch costs five. Take that five dollars divided by the twenty, about twenty five cents, and we came up with thirty cents, and that sounds like it's about reasonable. Okay, so we're going to go on to uh, this one here. A similar problem on page ninety seven. A four ba pound bag of sugar costs 454 one teaspoon servings. Oh, a teaspoon. That's like a little spoon. Uh, 454. So a four pound bag, so this big bag, uh, contains 454 spoon size servings of this. And that four pound bag costs $3.49. A batch of muffins uses three fourths cup of sugar. How many batches can you make if you use all the sugar? What is the cost of each? batch. What I did first is I decided to figure out, well, what's three-fourths of 78? Why did I do that? Because a batch uses three-fourths cup of sugar, and one cup is 48 teaspoons. So three-fourths of 48. So each batch uses uh, 36 uh, teaspoons. T-S-P is short for teaspoons. That's each batch uses 36 teaspoons. Now, we have this four pound bag has 454 teaspoons, uh, one teaspoon servings. So 454 divided by how many teaspoons are in one batch, that means I can make 12.6 batches, but I'm not gonna make, make 0.6 batches. I'm gonna make 12 batches out of that. Okay, fine. Now we gotta know what's the cost for each batch. So cost per batch, the cost is $3.49. That's right here. and divided by 12.6. Well, and now I know that I said 12 batches. Maybe I should have done 3.49 divided by 12. 
But I decided, well, let's see. Let's see what happens here. 3.49 divided by 12. Yeah, there we go. I would end up with the same kind of answer, 29 cents right there. So I should have changed this to just 12, not 12.6, 12 as I plan on making 12. So there we go. But I would still, it ended up rounding to the same amount, 29 cents per batch. Okay. Now, uh, using tools strategically. That's the end of our, remember, right here, we're using uh, using strategically uh, to use uh, choose tools to solve problems. Now, a wide variety of tools are available to help you solve problems, like rulers, models, calculators, and protractors, and software are some of the tools you can use in addition to paper and pencil. Choosing uh, tools wisely can help you solve problems and increase your understanding of math medical concepts. So in this problem here, the depth of uh, Golden Trout Lake has been decreasing in recent years. Two years ago, the depth of the lake was 186.73 meters. Since then, the depth has been changing at an average rate of negative one and three fourths per year. Ne negative one and three fourths percent per year. What is the depth of the lake today? Okay, we're going to turn this into a decimal. And one and three fourths, the one, there's the one. Three fourths is 75, uh, three quarters, which is 75 cents. So that means it's negative 1.75%. Now to turn this decimal to a percent, uh, well, remember, 1.75%, uh, that means 1.75 out of 100. And if you divide by 100, you're moving the decimal two times to the left. So that's 0 0.0175, moving it one, two times to the left. That's where we get the negative 1.0, uh, zero, negative 0 0.175. Now, we're going to take our original amount, uh, what the depth, the original depth was right here, and we're going to multiply that by how much it's decreasing by. And when we do that, we get negative 3.27 meters. So that's how much it went down by. So we take that uh, depth and we subtract that. And now it is this deep. It's no longer this deep. It's now this deep. Now off of that, we have to ta now take 1.75% uh, of that. So we take this amount right here and we do the same process that we, that we just did here. We will uh, multiply by 0 0.0. Uh, negative 0 0.0175, which means it decreases by not 3.27 meters, but now 3.21 meters. That's because we're taking a percentage of the new amount, not the old amount. And we subtract that amount here, and now it's 180, so it's not as deep as it was before. That is the new depth. So check your answer for reasonableness. So uh, we're going to be rounding numbers here. Instead of 186.73, we're going to call it 190 because it's easier to work with. And it changed about 2% because 1.75, that's pretty close. It's closer to 2% than 1%. And 2% 2 of 190, 0 0.02 times 90 is 3.8. And, and that's about 4 meters per year. So if you change that by 4 meters each year, that for two years, uh, that's eight a change of 8 meters. So 190 minus 8 is 182, and our answer was 180. Those, the, the, the um, estimate and the actual answer are pretty close. So it sounds like it's right. Okay. So what we have is this. All right, so what we have is this problem here. Three years ago, Jolene bought $750 worth of stock in a software company. That's partial ownership of a company. Since then, the value of her purchase has been increasing at an average rate of 12 and 3 fifths percent per year. How much is the stock worth now? This is my process I'm going to walk you through. 12 and 3 fifths percent, I turn that into a decimal. Here's the 12, the 12. And right in between there, it's as though there's a decimal point in between. So 12 point and then 3 fifths. Well, 3 fifths is 0. 0.6 as a decimal. I did 3 fifths. 3 divided by 5 is 0. 0.6. So there's the 
six right there. Oops. There's the six. So point, point, 12.6 percent or 0.126. Now I take that 750, our initial amount, and I'm taking 12 and three fifths percent, which is 0.126, and I end up with $94.50. That's how much it increased by. That's 12 and three fifths percent of the 750. So I increased it by that amount and I got $844.50. Now I take that and I do the same process. I have to take 12 and three fifths percent, which is multiplying by 0.126, and I get this amount and increase by this much money in the second year. So, uh, and notice it increased by more because I'm taking 12 and three fifths percent of the, of the new amount, not the original amount. So this is called compound interest. It's in, it's uh, it's increasing by the new amounts. And so I have this and increased by that much. And now I have a new value. Now I take 12 and three fifths percent of this new value. Once again, times 0.126, I end up with this number here. And that number uh, gets added to uh, the old amount right here. And I end up with a rounded number. Now what I'm doing, what you probably notice here is I have these long decimals, but I don't have the long decimals at the end here. That's because I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. And we round to the nearest hundredth because we're dealing with money. And money stops at the pennies, which is the hundredths place. So I end up with this long decimal, but in the end, I round it to 72 cents. And that's what our final stock worth is.